Good morning again, brothers and sisters in Christ. It's uh, Sunday and happy Lord's Day. And um, <clears throat> thank you for uh, worshiping with us this morning, even if we are on a virtual thing. We, uh, the God is blessing us that we could manage to be together in, in heart and in spirit. Um, this morning, we will try a different approach on this passage taken from John 15, 1 and 2. Um, we will take a closer look on how our heart will be transformed from a barren heart and a hard soil heart to a fully humbled, faithful heart. <clears throat> this is the season for gardening. We still have about a month to go as we enjoy the uh, season of spring. And uh, people are swarming Home Depot and Lowe's buying soil, seeds, and uh, different kinds of plants and vegetables. And also they're buying tools to cultivate their garden. If you love gardening, the best season of all is here, but not for long. As I was doing my gardening last weekend, uh, trying to relax and refresh my mind from all the work, uh, work week, um, I, I, I was uh, thinking and asking God to help me find an idea on what to share to you this morning. And um, while I'm tending with my plants and working on the hard soil from our backyard, an idea came to me from the likeness of a vast land suitable for a vineyard to a human heart where God's word can be planted. And then it came to me the bigger picture. What about, I'll talk about a vineyard, a vineyard compared to the heart. So we've all been to Napa Valley. Uh, this is the place where some of the best grapes and some of the best wines in our country are being produced and made. Acres of acres of land is being cultivated and being used for vineyards. As you pass through the valley of Napa, you will see the marvelous and magnificent scenery of rows and rows of grapes in the vast vineyards. This morning, as I've said, I would like to represent the soil as the heart of man. We will talk about the development of man's unbelieving heart to a transformed and humble, faithful heart fit for God's kingdom, or we could call it God's vineyard. Not until a man believes he's in Jesus Christ and accepts the gospel, he won't be able to enjoy God's grace and blessings to live a fruitful life. His heart can become hard and callous and won't be able to discern the words of God. Even if his ears, even his ears will not be able to hear it. Even his eyes won't be able to see it. His mind becomes dull. When a transformed heart, with a transformed heart, we will be able to discern that Jesus Christ is the true vine. We are the branches, and separate from the, branch, uh, from the vine, the branch will die. The vine is the source of our life. Is the, the vine is the source of life of the branch. And our Father in heaven is the vine dresser. He is the constant gardener who prepares our heart. He cultivates it. He nurtures it. Sows the seed in it and makes sure that we will produce harvest, good harvest. Without the good soil, we seize our heart, no vine will grow in it. Without a humble heart and a faithful heart, Jesus can dwell in it. When we were in grade school, when I was in grade school, we had a class uh, that taught us about how to prepare a garden which is suitable for planting mainly vegetables and fruits. The class is called, of course, gardening. Anyway, it is a mandatory class that you have to take from second grade to sixth grade. And we were taught before starting a project, we need to write the steps and procedure on how to start your garden. It's not that easy though, but you know, you have to follow some, some rules and plans. So I thought about this vineyard. A vineyard is vast compared to a home garden but the principle in the development is the same. So I will apply the principle of the garden and development of a vineyard. So we got to the steps and procedure for a ground or soil development. Number one, do the working drawing of the project. 
you may need to draw a plan, prepare the materials needed, prepare the tools needed, start working on the soil, and prepare for planting. So let's, let's go now for number one. Do the working drawing or plan of the project. Your heart is the project. Remember, the project is your heart and God created it. Psalm 139, 13 to 14 said, For you formed my inward parts, knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. Psalm 139, 1, it says, O Lord, you have searched me and known me. Before we become a Christian, we get entangled with the world and, it, and its deeds, and we become a part of it. This condition of our being will eventually harden our heart, even make our mind dull and our ears clogged for the words of God because of our foolish reasoning. Our former condition is of our heart is a foolish heart. Uh, Psalm 14.1 says, The fool says to his heart, There is no God. They are corrupt. They are abominable deeds. There is none who does good. We have a worldly heart. Titus 3.3 3 says, For we ourselves were foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, hated by others, and hating one another. <clears throat> we'll go to the next step. Prepare the materials needed. Our heart is the material, since our heart is that harden the heart of man. Matthew 15, 19 says, For out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, and slander. These are the things that defile the heart, the heart of man, wicked thoughts that are not pleasing to God, murder by just being angry and furious with somebody, and not being forgiving, just by looking lustfully on somebody makes us guilty for adultery and sexual immorality, covetousness, lying, and gossip. These are the impurities of the heart that makes it hard and barren. Remember the wickedness of mankind before the big flood? Genesis 6, 5 tells us, The Lord saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart is only evil. Step three, let's prepare for the tools needed. The Word of God is the tool, that, the only tool that we need, the Bible. <clears throat> the Word of God will transform a hard heart into a soft and humble heart. The Word of God brought by the prophet Jonah to the people of Nineveh reminds me of this. They heard the word, they repented and turned back to God. 2 Timothy 3, 6-17 to says, All scriptures is given by inspiration of God and are profitable for doctrine, reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Next step will be start working on the soil. Bear with me because these are steps on how to, where the groundbreaking. The groundwork starts, so watering, digging, breaking, cultivating is, is needed. As you dig in the hard soil, you encounter rocks, stones, and pebbles. Impurities on the soil need to be taken out. No nutrients on the soil at this time, just dry and rocky. And while we're doing this, you also tend to separate the good soil from the bad parts of the soil. As you work on the soil is how God works in you. Philippians 2.3 tells us that, For it is God who works in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. 
Philippians 1 6 also. And since God is your gardener, and he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> uh, watering of the soil should also take place. And here we could consider watering is the faith, and the nutrients or the fertilizer we put on the soil is the fellowship. First Thessalonians 5.11 tells us, Therefore, encourage one another and build one another, just as you are doing. <clears throat> With this faith in our heart and our fellowship for others as one body in Christ makes the perfect combination of a heart that will be fertile and good for growing. Brothers and sisters, we really need to encourage one another, especially for those new in faith, for those who are becoming weary, and for those who are passing through some type of suffering. <clears throat> uh, the truth about this is that we really need fellowship so that the weak in faith will be brought up by those who are stronger in faith. We truly need one another. Hebrews 10, 24 to 25 said, Let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as in the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. So now, we're ready for planting. When the soil is ready, we're ready for planting the seed. So, but the work doesn't stop there. Since the, um, so the soil is ready for planting, but it doesn't mean the work is, is, is soil is done. We need to maintain a heart or a soil that is constantly stable, that is constantly soft and productive. Even a good thing can turn into a bad thing if kept away from bad things. Sometimes the heart gets weary, not over, not of over sin, but just being isolated from all the good things that we face from day to day. Our situation today, so being isolated from each other, will have a tendency to make us weary, to make us cold in our faith. Here are some good advice in order to we can maintain a healthy heart, always abounding with good works. Hebrews 10.22 says, Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience, and the bodies washed with pure water. <clears throat> Here are some uh, good advice and things to remember to have a humble heart. Number one, by turning our heart to the Lord. 2 Corinthians 3.16 says, but, whatever their heart, but whenever their heart turns to the, to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Being with someone we love requires us to be present, not only in body, but in heart. We may spend our time with Him, but it if our heart is somewhere else, it's as if it's not really with Him. Our hearts can be turned away from Him to things such as our anxieties, our worldly distractions, or even just the day-to-day -day matters of life. We just draw near to Jesus with our hearts. When we turn our hearts to the Lord, the veil is taken away. This means at any time, at any place, no matter our, what condition we are, we can turn our hearts to Him without any barrier. Second Corinthians 3.18 continues it, and as well with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from the degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. Next advice, by exercising our hearts to believe. Romans 10.9 Roman 10, Romans 10 9 to 10 says, Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and saved. According to this verse, to, or to these verses, believing is a matter of the heart. To believe with our heart in the Lord's word and with his providence in our life 
is essential in maintaining our relationship with Him. His word is truth, and we can believe it. Doubting His words and actions negatively affects our relationship with Him. By exercising our heart to believe in God's word and His will, we honor Him and keep our relationship with Him in a healthy and a normal state. Third point. By having a contented heart, a heart that is content. Philippians 4, 11b-13 says, For I have learned in whatever situa situation that I am to be content, says uh, the Apostle Paul. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger abundance and need i can do all things through him who strengthens me here the apostle paul tells us the secret on how to be, have a happy life a happy life the secret of it is life is is contentment contentment is the secret of a happy life second timothy first timothy six six to seven it says but godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world, and we could not take anything out of the world. All of the material things that we try to fill our lives with aren't really necessary bad things. But when they become the end goals and the reason for our being, we end up being discontent. Because those things were never meant to fulfill us. The only place that we can only find true fulfillment and contentment is in Christ Jesus. Next, by having our heart renewed. By having our heart renewed. 2 Corinthians 4.16 says, So we do not lose heart, though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. Brothers and sisters, discouragement and disappointments are normal emotions that we all experience, even as Christians. As a matter of fact, usually when you are a Christian, you really feel this discouragement and disappointment every time. But it is important to know how to make sure those crippling emotions don't get the best of us. Even when it seems like we can't go any day, another we can't go another day against our struggles, God will grant us renewed strength. To keep pushing on. He is there for us in our weakness moments, in our weakest moments, just as long as we let Him in. There's a lot of work in building up our spiritual life, especially in building our heart. He, I, for one, I am still a work in progress, but because of Jesus, I hold on. And now, the heart is ready for work. John 15, 1 says, And Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Let's see what vine dresser is. Vine dresser, a husbandman, and a gardener. A person who prunes and trains and cultivates the vine. A person who cultivates the land is a farmer. A person who tends and cultivates a garden. This is God the Father itself cultivating our lives. He is the constant caretaker of the land, our soil, our heart. He is the caretaker of the vine, of Jesus Christ. He prunes them, he trains them, and he cultivates them. <clears throat> well, one of the work of the vine dresser is to prune the branches. It says, John 15, 2, Every branch in me does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it so it may bear more fruit. <clears throat> Pruning cleans away dead, dying, and deceased material. Pruning removes unnecessary branches, reducing weight on heavy limbs. The vine dresser, which we can call as God, does this to maximize our fruit production. Branches produce fruit to nourish others, not to satisfy themselves. The more fruit we are able to produce, the more people we can bless with our spiritual bounty. 
the pruning process in our lives are sufferings, trials, lost. Growing in holiness doesn't happen automatically. Our trials are times to trust God to use our pain to make us more like Christ. And with this perspective, we can say that trials are gifts. Even James even calls them joy. James 1, 2 to 4 says, Count it all joy, my brothers and sisters, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness has its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. We can find joy in our trials because God is working on our hearts, pruning us more into the image of Christ. It may feel like you're being chopped up, but the divine gardener is pruning you so that you bear, you can bear more fruit in your life. Do you feel that you are being pruned by the divine gardener at this point of your life? Psalm 9, 9-10 says, The Lord is a stronghold of the oppressed. A stronghold in times of trouble. And those who know your name put their trust in you. For you, O Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. That is why they wrote the song, We are the branches, the Lord is the vine, we cannot stand alone. Abide in his words, and the strength we will find, glory to God is shown. The fruit of the Spirit brings joy to my soul. The fruit of the Spirit is how we may know that Christ is within us. He is showing the way. Eternal life he has given us will harvest that fruit on that day. Remember that song? So, from a hard soil to good soil. A good soil produces good branches. Good branches produce good fruits. From a good heart produce godly character that produce the fruit of the Spirit, which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Brothers and sisters, this is the message. God needs a good and faithful heart so that we can, so that he can plant his son Jesus into our heart. Let us always be reminded that God's business is in us is always the heart of the matter. He said, give me thy heart. Give me thy heart. He is speaking so tenderly. Give me thy heart. God is calling us. James 8. James 4, 8 says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts. What is the condition of your heart at this moment, dear brothers and sisters? Are you weary and troubled? Do you have some worries that uh, keep you awake at night? Would you like to have that inner peace and contentment back in your life? Jesus is calling us. Psalm 34, 8 says, O haste, O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. For those who went astray and would like to come back to the Lord, Isaiah 1 and 18 says, Come now. Let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. The plan for salvation is this, John 3, 17, 16 to 17. Says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but surely have an everlasting life. 
For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order, but in order that the world might be saved through Him. Our sins, there are many, but His mercy is more. God's grace is waiting. Let Him fix your heart and enjoy His everyday blessing. God has done His part. Will, will you do yours? For those who have not received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, yet this is the time to do it and don't delay anymore. Believe in the gospel of Christ. Repent of your past sins. Confess your faith in Jesus Christ. Be baptized. Be faithful unto death. Or of this, or of there are prayers that you would like to request, please let us know. Call the elders or any of the deacons and we'll make it known so that we can all pray for you. This is the message of God. Thank you for listening.